so what I've been working on is um, uh, my company I work at CNWR, we do a lot of projects. Um, so on the projects to make things more organized, we've been working on a bit of automation around Slack because that's what our main chat platform is Slack. So I wrote a workflow here that will on the project status change of ready for dispatch. So when a project is actually ready to go, um, that way it doesn't pick up new ones that are created. It will grab all the project members and then it will also use a sub workflow that I wrote to map the ConnectWise IDs of the users to their emails. And they'll use their emails to then map their email to their Slack ID. I'm then um, grabbing a channel name based on the project itself. It's a bit messy, it needs to be cleaned up, but I plan on using some of the stuff I learned from the Series 100 to, to make things a bit nicer and either um, but it'll preface this channel with PRJ. It grabs some information about the company and stuff and gets rid of spaces and symbols and stuff to make it Slack friendly. So Slack can actually create the channel. Um, and then also we ran into the thing where if you have a company and you do a project for them, like something simple like um, a workstation deployment, if you were to do that for that company again, it'd create the same channel. So I added a little bit here that will actually grab the project ID to add a little bit of uniqueness to the channel name so that it doesn't try to recreate the same channel. So each project will have its own channel properly. I'm then grabbing all the Slack channels that we have, checking to see if it exists by just mapping the, the channel name to the list that returns from Slack. Um, this also needs cleaned up. This is definitely a work in progress here. Uh, I'm just checking if the name is within the returned channel list channels with a mapping of name and throwing that into a list. So if it's in there, it's true. It follows a true. If it's false, then it, it doesn't do it. So if it does already exist, it just says it already exists. Otherwise, it'll create the channel, and then it'll also go through and loop through all of the uh, users that I found back here, and it'll invite them to the channel. And so all the all the team members of the project automatically get added to the channel. Roostbot gets added to the channel as well. And so they have a place to coordinate and make things more organized. And then, of course, there's the opposite. What happens when you close a project? It was This one was a bit easier to do because I didn't have to grab IDs or anything I like members. So first, just simply grab the Slack channels. Uh, I, grab the channel name or set the channel name variable just based on the same same content. I check to see if the channel is there because there could be a project that was started before this workflow was created. So the channel may not be there and it may be in a different format. If it is found, it will just archive it. And then currently this is my sort of error handling. It just posts into a development room that I can see some output of the uh, of what happened. So I currently I'm just posting the channel name, if it was over budget hours or if it ran late based on project details. And then it does another check to see if we're over budget. And if we are, it will then create a postmortem. So if there were over budget or if we went too long on a project, they'll automatically create a ConnectWise ticket to go over that project with the team to see what happened. Why are we late? What was the problem that we faced with this project? So we can better determine like how to handle a future project of the same type. 